So in this Starfield video, I'm going to be sharing with you all a bunch of essential tips that I wish I knew sooner than later when playing. Hopefully some of these are able to help you out in some kind of way. Let's go ahead and get into all of these. So the first thing that I wanted to go over is the Dream Home trait. I had no idea that this is the only way you're able to build in a huge house. So if you're into building, this trait is definitely for you. After you talk to Sarah Morgan at the lodge at New Atlantis and then exit out of the lodge, this side quest called Dream Home becomes available. This side quest called Dream Home becomes available. And when you go to visit the Dream Home on Nasoi, you'll find out that you will have to pay a fee of 500 per week or the total of a whopping 125,000, which more than likely you're not gonna have that in the very beginning. So yeah, you'll end up having to pay 500 per week to be able to build in this giant home. You're able to place tons of things in this. This would be something builders wish they knew sooner because you can build all kinds of stuff in this house. This is definitely for the more creative side of the Starfield community. Pretty cool. Anyways, this next one will be over the hero worship trait. Just going over a few of the traits just in case some of you may not know about them. If you choose this one, you'll end up getting a companion that will give you gifts. The companion is called an adoring fan, and he'll give you gifts over time. Once again, after you talk to Sarah Morgan at New Atlantis, he'll just randomly appear at New Atlantis and want to join your crew. And something I didn't know, which I wish I knew sooner, is that he does give you gifts and you don't technically have to have him on your crew and around. He'll still be able to gift you stuff like when you go to your ship and whatnot, which I thought was pretty cool. You don't have to technically have him following you around. Um, anyways, this next one's just a quick one that I wanted to go over. Some of you might already know about this, but just in case, this is a handy one to know. You are able to favorite different items in your inventory, such as, for an example, if I want to favorite this shotgun, as you can see, there's an option to favorite it and choose where you want to have it on your hotbar. Definitely something that can come in handy to quick swap different weapons or whatever. You can also, you know, favorite like a throwable if you want. Doesn't have to technically be just a gun. You can also favorite different aid items too. Med packs are already favorited uh, in the beginning, but you can favorite other different aid items as well. You can favorite quite a bit of different things within your inventory, which is handy once again to know about just to quick swap to different things. All right, so this next tip will be over how you can change your appearance. I know a lot of players spend a lot of time creating their characters, and if there's some adjustments you wanna make with your character, you are able to do that at a cost. One location that you're able to do that at is New Atlantis, which in case you don't know where New Atlantis is located at, it's located on the planet Jemison. As you can see, here it is. This is a pretty common area this is, you know, one of the main areas that you'll go to in the game, so you'll be familiar with this place if you haven't played already. And yeah, once you're here, I'm just going to start at this area because this is an area where players will end up being at when they come here. And once you're here, all you have to do is head to the transit, which is located this way. I'll go ahead and speed up this footage real quick. And yeah, once you're at the transit, you just want to head to the commercial district here. This will take you to where you're able to change your appearance at, at once again, a cost. This isn't the only place where you're able to change your appearance at, keep that in mind, but this is uh, one place that you are able to do it at. As you can see, you just head up to this guy, and yeah, you're able to change your appearance for a price of 500 credits. Pretty cool. Keep in mind, this makes it so you can only change your body and face appearances, as well as your pronouns and name, too. So yeah, unfortunately, you're not able to change your background or traits from this. All right, so in case you don't know, you're also able to immediately fast travel without having to go into your star map to find where you have to go, or go into your spaceship manually and travel to orbit. You can just simply go to your mission log and set course over the highlighted mission that you're trying to do. As you can see, it'll immediately take you where you have to go on the star map, and you can just simply fast travel like that. Definitely quicker. Anyways, now let's go ahead and get into a few tips over carry weights and loot. Now, in this game, the carry weight is labeled mass. As you can see, this vacuum tape weighs 0.35 mass. And you can check how much you're carrying by pulling up the menu and then going to your inventory. 
as you can see down there I have 108 mass out of 135 so yeah keep that in mind when you're looting everything you do have a limit of how much you can carry and when you eventually get over encumbered this will make it so you can't fast travel and it'll also affect other things as well i'll go ahead and show you by getting too much loot all right so i am officially over encumbered as you can see i have 162 mass now out of 135 and yeah check this out here's what happens if you go and try to run running while over encumbered will quickly drain your oxygen, which can affect you majorly, as you saw that text pop up in the top right. So that's another downfall over getting over encumbered. So definitely watch out how much you're picking up around in the game. Now, if you are a looter and just like to scavenge everything you see around in the game, like myself, there are some possibilities over how you can hold more. For one example, and another tip that I'm going to get into, is using your companion as a pack mule. You can say, let's trade gear with them, and you can give them a bunch of stuff that you've gathered. As you can see, I can give them all this, put it on them. I can give them some weapons to take the load off on me. As you can see, now I'm officially not over encumbered by one mass. But yeah, keep in mind that they don't have an infinite amount of storage. As you can see, you can load up a 135 total with Sarah. Of course, different companions will have different carry weight. But with Sarah here, she's able to hold uh, 135 total mass. So yeah, that is one way that you could take the load off of yourself just by simply giving your companions some of the stuff that you have. Also, you can store things in your ship too. I can store a total of 420 mass on my ship. So that's another way you could take the load off on yourself as well. There's tons of things that you can just put your stuff in in the ship. Specifically on this ship, there's a lot of loot containers at the top up here. I could put, you know, some things in this storage crate, some things in this weapon case. Heck, I can even just drop things in here too. If you really want to hoard stuff, you can just drop a bunch of the stuff that you get and then just sell it later or whatever. And keep in mind, if you choose to just drop it in your ship, that won't affect the mass capacity with the ship. Only by storing things in the containers will affect the mass capacity within the ship. One way to figure out how much mass your ship can hold is just by simply trading with your partner and going over to your ship storage. But yeah, that's a little bit more about weight management. Another thing that I wanted to get into about weight management, just one more tip, is the skill that you can use to up your carry weight if you want. If you choose weightlifting, as you can see, you can increase the total carry capacity by 100 kilograms and gain 50% resistance to stagger if you completely max it out. So, pretty useful if you want to be able to scavenge more things. So yeah, that's a few tips right there over weight management. Next, I want to get into healing. First off, you can heal yourself by sleeping, which is convenient. Helps you save a med kit, as you can see. You just have to sleep for an hour at least and you'll be full health. This can come in handy too out in random places as well. I had this save my life before by finding a bed out in a hostile environment. I just slept to regenerate my health and then I went and took on enemies. And then I would sleep again if my health got low and kept repeating that cycle just to not waste med kits. Speaking of med kits, that's the next tip I want to get into. How to purchase med kits and the other tip is on how to heal your afflictions as well, if you want to go that route. One place where you can easily purchase medkits at will be located over at New Atlantis. Once over here though, you just want to head to the Mass District location. And then when you spawn in, you just want to head down this ramp and take a left and head to this elevator over here. This will lead to the healing supplies. 
as you can see down here, you can find the med bay. Just enter it right here and talk to the person behind this desk, which she isn't here right now. Here she is. Talk to her. So one thing you can do is tell the doctor that you need help and she will cure your afflictions if you have any for 500 credits or if you just want to simply buy med kits and whatnot just choose this option here I could use some medical supplies and then just go to aid and head down as you can see med packs will cost 498 keep in mind you can sell things here too however you can only sell medical items but nonetheless you're able to sell things as well here. Interesting enough, you can also sell from your ship inventory as well if you just stored a bunch of things in your ship inventory, as you can see. That's one of the options. But anyways, yeah, med packs will cost 498 credits each. It's good to stock up on these. Anyways, carrying on. Next quick tip I wanted to get into is how to fast travel to your ship or find it with ease. All right, so next up here, I'm gonna be showing y'all how to fast travel to your ship. First off, if you press LB, if you're playing on the Xbox, this will come up where you're able to survey the area. As you can see, over there is the residential district. Over there is the mass district. And over there is the lodge. This will make it so you can find out where different places are located at around you. This will also make it so you can locate your ship too but you're also able to just simply fast travel to your ship as well. As you can see at the bottom, there's an option to press RB for the surface map. And if you do that, you can just go over to your ship if you can't find it by just scanning around the area. And you're able to just simply fast travel to it by pressing Y. You don't even have to hover over it. You just press Y once you pull up your surface map. But yeah, I'm gonna actually exit out of the ship because these next few tips I'll be sharing with y'all are how to repair your ship, how to modify your ship, and how to purchase a new ship. If you head over to the ship services technician, which he's located right over here, as you can see, this isn't the only ship services technician that you'll find, but this is one that you can find at New Atlantis. Anyways, as you can see, you can Anyways, as you can see, you can have your ship be repaired for at least a thousand credits. And also you're able to view and modify your ships here. I'll go ahead and click this option just to show you all a quick example. As you can see, you'll go into this modified mode and you can press X to, you know, build your ship and attach different things. Pretty cool. I'm not gonna get super into detail about this, but this is where you can go to modify your ship at. Anyways, next up here, as you can see, there's another option where you can purchase ships from the ship service technician, as you can see. There's different ships that you can buy from them. And of course, different uh, service technicians will have different ships that you can purchase. Pretty awesome. There's tons of different ships out there. But uh, yeah, also if you want to sell things, this next tip I want to get into, you just head up to this trade authority kiosk, which is located right by this ship services technician here at New Atlantis. You can also find them in other areas too, but this is one location where you can find a trade authority kiosk. And as you can see, you can go and sell things on this as well. This is where the importance of looting stuff comes into play. You can just sell a bunch of the stuff that you've looted in the past. Like for instance that. I got 182 uh, credits for that. Typically you want to find things that are at least above 100 credits. I wouldn't suggest to pick up every single thing that you find. I mean, you can if you want. But I mean like this for example, 21 credits. I, I don't know. That's just really not that valuable. And it's just taking up... Uh, your carry weight but then again it's totally up to you if you want to pick up things that are worth you know less than 100 credits then go ahead be my guest um, but typically I try to look for things that are above 100 credits or around 100 credits when I'm when I'm scavenging things I guess it all depends on the person's play style and whatnot but uh, yeah that's how you can just easily sell stuff that you have collected you can see the value of things right before you loot stuff. 
in case you're wondering, well, how do you know how much something is worth before looting it? Well, it states the value before you do pick it up. Weapons are typically worth quite a bit, and armor as well. Anyways, next up here is over how you can show the resources over different locations that you can go to. For example here, where New Atlantis is located at on Jemison, if you want to check out what resources are available here, you can just press LB if you're on Xbox, as you can see, it's located right there, it just states show resources. And yeah, check this out. We got water, we got lead, lead, what's available here, and argon. So yeah, that's how you can check out what resources are available at the locations that you're going to. Pretty handy to know if you're looking for specific resources. Which speaking of resources, a few things that they're used for. First off, they're used to build different things within your house if you chose the dream home trait. As you can see, this requires aluminum and iron to make this industrial workbench. Or if you want to make this chair, that's going to require aluminum and fiber and so on and so forth. Different things require different materials. This requires iron and aluminum, this bench here. And yeah, you can you know navigate through the different things that you can build within your dream home. Pretty awesome how much things are actually available. This weapon rack here requires copper and iron. Anyways, something else that resources are used for are for crafting things on your industrial workbench. Like for example here, if I wanted to build this adaptive frame, that's going to require aluminum and iron. Or if I want to build uh, this reactive gauge, that's going to require aluminum and copper. Yeah, you get it. Different things are going to require different resources. There's all kinds of stuff that you can make, like on the weapons workbench. I can't exactly craft this right now because it requires adhesive, but you know, making modifications for your weapons is going to require resources as well. If you played any of the Fallout games, you should know plenty about how resources work in Bethesda games. But yeah, I guess that's our wrapping up this video, everyone. Hopefully you all found this video enjoyable, and at least some of these tips were able to help you out in some kind of way. I'm out of here though, everyone. As always, Appreciate you all taking the time, watching, and listening. If you did find this enjoyable, by the way, real quick, as a friendly reminder here in the end, consider taking a little bit of your time and leaving a like on the video. The support is greatly appreciated and would help get these tips passed around to more Starfield players. But yeah, I'm out of here. But yeah, as always, that's totally up to you. Just a reminder here once again at the end. I'm out of here, everyone. Until next time, peace.